this box. Dante's Box Nation, what's going on guys? So I've been on the road and traveling, taking care of some business, so I wasn't able to make a video for a day or two. But with that being said, for some of the people that were asking and wondering, yeah, I'm still out here in this paradise that we call Thailand. It's been six years now, and I didn't have a lot of brothers emailing me asking me how they can make the move to Thailand. Some of them that were emailing me, they already made the move and moved out here, came out here just to check it out and decided to stay. Now, very soon, I'm going to make a video on why I moved to Thailand and maybe four or five reasons why you might want to move to Thailand as well. And I'm talking about male or female because I done met single sisters out here that live in Thailand and have no plans of moving back to the States. One of the sisters I met, I actually made a video with her asking her, like, you know, why she decided to move to Thailand. And if I can find that footage, I'm going to add it to the video. I actually met her in my friend's soul food restaurant. Her and her teenage daughter, her older teenage daughter, they moved out here from the States. So once again, for the people that are thinking about moving overseas, I'm going to make a video giving you a couple reasons why you might want to move to Thailand if you're planning on leaving the States and you want to live overseas. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this video. Now, like I said, I was busy for like a day or two, but I really wanted to talk about this situation with Bill Haney giving Ryan Garcia an ultimatum, saying that they want the rematch under one circumstance, that Ryan Garcia does VADA testing in the next 48 hours to prove that he's clean right now. So how about this? Ryan Garcia and Team Garcia, if you talking about you want a rematch, enroll in the drug program in 48 hours, VADA, is waiting on you. Next move will be on you, Team Garcia and Ryan Garcia. Why are you fat mouthing? Okay, so Ryan Garcia, he never responded to this challenge. And the reason why Bill Haney challenged Ryan Garcia to obviously enroll in VADA testing, because a lot of cheaters, they actually juice even more off season as opposed to when they're in training camp and they know they're going to be tested by VADA. So so here's the way it works, and I'm sure uh, Chris also understands it because Chris partially explained this to me as well. Here's how it works when you're microdosing. So you, you, you bigger dose off season, which is not when there's no fights and nobody's getting tested because boxing is the wild west and doesn't test in between fights. Yeah. And then you're microdosing in, during camp. And when you're microdosing, it is trapped in the fat and therefore not going into your bloodstream. So therefore it's harder to catch you. When a fighter struggles to make weight, Sometimes they're losing all that fat and you get a little bit of tricklage coming out of the fat and the drugs will some come out in small spurts. That's why they're always caught in small doses. And people, the, the, the moronic part of the population will say, oh, that's not enough to help him. No, that's just the part that finally leaked It's the leftovers. Out. Yes. So when they tested Ryan Garcia, they actually found not one, but two PEDs in the system, Osterine and Nandrolone. Now, when it came to the Nandrolone, Ryan Garcia, he didn't test positive for that because it was such a small amount in the system. But when it came to the Osterine, he was 60 times over the limit. So when you hear people say it was a small amount, that's not even true. Because if it was a small amount, he wouldn't have even tested positive for it, just like he didn't test positive for the Nandrolone. But the bigger question is, why was Nandrolone even in his system, even if it was a very small amount? I'm telling you right now, there's going to be so much evidence against Ryan Garcia. This is a bad situation for him because once they subpoena Vada, oh man, you're talking about irrefutable scientific evidence against Ryan. Just to give you guys a very small example of what we can expect from Vada in this lawsuit, let me read something that Vada put out after Ryan Garcia started making excuses for why he tested positive. This is what Vada says. A reminder to fighters regarding supplements. You are responsible for anything you take. Whether or not supplements are listed on doping control forms, anti-doping organizations do not approve supplements. It's why VADA fighters are provided the warning statements and other resources. The second sentence that I read for you guys is the most important to me because they are making it very clear that you are responsible for whatever you take, whatever is in your system 
Meaning you can't use the excuse, oh, I didn't know what I was doing. Somebody set me up. You know, it was contamination, et cetera, et cetera. No, you're responsible for that. Just going off the rails. Yeah, I took all the steroids and I'm going to quit boxing and I already made millions. I, I, that disparity as a fan, how do you reconcile these two reactions to the same thing? Well, firstly, first, irregardless of how much was in a system, it doesn't matter. This is oxyrene. Oxyrene, it is a banned substance. It doesn't matter. It was there. This is a this is a, a qualitative test, not a quantitative test. It's like being pregnant. You're either pregnant or you're not. It's either in your system or it's not, and it's a banned substance. It doesn't matter how much or how little is there. And it's banned for a reason. You know, the best thing about taking things to court, regardless if it's civil or criminal, is all that stupid stuff you guys hear Ryan Garcia say, and then you hear his racist fans repeat, I can guarantee you the lawyers are not going to repeat any of that stupid stuff you hear Ryan Garcia or his racist fans say on the internet in a court of law. Because trying to tell the judge, your honor, it wasn't the steroids, it was my left hook. Steroids just happened to be in my system when I threw the left hook, that's all. What? I can guarantee you, the judge and everybody in that courtroom is going to bust out laughing because ignorance, racism, propaganda, and conspiracy theories is only tolerated when people are on the internet hiding their identity. So the conclusion is, of course, Ryan Garcia is not going to enroll in VADA and be tested right now. Just in case you guys didn't know, before Ryan Garcia fought Devin Haney, after he fought Javante Tank Davis, he did not enroll in VADA testing for almost a whole year. It was 10 months. And then soon as he goes back to VADA testing, he pops dirty. This is the man that is infamously known for saying, what if there was a steroid league? Man, that would be crazy. I mean, that would be like some guy, he's doing an interview, right? And then out of nowhere, in the middle of the interview, he says, imagine if every man was given 20 wives to have at one time and they would do whatever you told them to do. Wouldn't that be crazy? The perception would obviously be he's only saying that because that's what he wants. Ryan Garcia, he said that because that's what he wanted to do and he did it. So at the end of the day, Devin Haney is making it very clear that he wants the rematch as long as Ryan Garcia shows right now that he's not dirty. Not a year from now, not six or eight months from now. Right now, he wants to see if Ryan Garcia is clean or not. Bill Haney gave Ryan Garcia 48 hours to enroll in VADA, and Ryan Garcia, he hasn't even responded yet. It's funny because Ryan Garcia was very active on Twitter, once again making wild accusations and just saying the craziest stuff. But once it was official that Devin Haney was suing him, all of that stopped. Now Ryan is pretty quiet on Twitter compared to how he was before. And it's pretty crazy because now that Ryan Garcia's career has been tarnished, you would think that Ryan will go out of his way to enroll in VADA just to show everybody that he's clean right now. Not that that's going to change the fact that he popped dirty when he fought Devin Haney, but at least you're showing that you're clean right now. And the crazy thing is, how come the New York State Athletic Commission, they didn't order Ryan Garcia to take year-round drug testing while he's suspended? Because obviously, he's still training. He's still calling out everyone. And fans, they can't use the excuse that Ryan doesn't want to pay for it because that's a drop in the bucket for Ryan. You know, Fight Hub was doing an interview with Eddie Hearn, and we already know Eddie Hearn's stance on this whole situation when it comes to Ryan Garcia cheating. He said, you know, it's very good that Devin Haney is suing him. Perhaps this will be a deterrent for cheaters in the future not to cheat. And Marcos from Fight Hub, he was clearly trying to go out of his way to defend Ryan Garcia, trying to use all those race fan excuses that you hear on the internet. But Eddie Hearn, he completely shut that down with a logical and legal rebuttal. You know, because this... This case could wrap up to some serious numbers, you know? But I do love moving away from the case. I do love the threat to another fighter that if you do test positive, the fighter could have a potential case against you because that's a much bigger deterrent than a year ban, right? Look at Ryan, he got a year ban. So what? When was the fight? April? We're in October already. You know, before you know it, he'll be starting training camp. He, I don't think with his position, he would have fought this year anyway. So that is a much bigger deterrent. And that's why I find it very interesting. Okay, so this is the part where Marcos Vallejos, he tries to defend Ryan. Yeah, on the flip side, I would imagine, you know, the counterpoint is, you know, how can you sue someone for, for beating you up in the ring? Like, this is what you signed up for. You know, no, you because, they've, the money. because they've signed a contract to follow certain rules to make it a fair fight. And the rules weren't followed and it wasn't a fair fight. 
So you, you know, in that essence, you 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 haven't delivered on what you said you would in the contract, which is to be a clean fighter. Because you know, whether Ryan was unlucky, whether Ryan was cheating, whatever he was doing, you can't say it was a fair fight. That's why it's a no contest. It's not it's not a no contest because Devin knows someone at the NY, you know, AC, NYSAC. It's a no contest because it was not a fair fight. Because the rules were not followed. And the more you think about it, the more interesting that case becomes. Did you guys hear Marcos from Fight Hub? He said, yeah, but how can you sue somebody for beating them up in the ring? I mean, they both agreed to fight. Let me say this. You don't have to be a lawyer to realize what Marcos just said was idiotic. But Marcos is not really stupid. He's just a typical Ryan Garcia race fan. And he's having a hard time dealing with the fact that this huge win, what would have been a huge win for his race and his fighter has just been snatched away from him. I'm going to say this again. I can guarantee you Ryan Garcia's lawyers, they are not going to use any of these stupid talking points that you see from Ryan Garcia or these race fans on the internet. For the people making excuses for Ryan Garcia or using the same excuses that Ryan Garcia was using before he found out that he was being sued, I can almost assure you guys that just like Ryan Garcia pled guilty when he met up with the commission, he's going to plead guilty and try to settle out of court when it comes to this lawsuit. I'd be extremely surprised if Ryan Garcia was willing to take this case to trial. Him settling out of court would confirm that every single thing that he said, and once again, these race fans repeated, was an absolute lie. Because if Ryan Garcia truly believes that it was just a left hook and it wasn't PEDs, then there should be no way that he settles out of court. But if he does settle out of court and Devin Haney accepts it, then Devin should settle for $50 million. With all that being said, I really, really hope that Devin Haney has a good lawyer. I'm talking about a Johnny Cochran lawyer, someone who is personally going to have Devin Haney's best interest and wants to win this lawsuit more than Devin Haney wants to win it. From what I'm hearing is Devin Haney, he has one of these boxing type of lawyers, the type of lawyers that other boxers, they all use. I believe he has the same lawyer that Eddie Hearn has. I'm telling you this because I've met some of these guys. The majority of these non-black lawyers that work with boxers, when you start talking boxing with them, you find out right away that they are complete race fans. They say the same type of stuff you hear in the comment section. And a lot of these lawyers are representing black boxers. Now, and I never talked to Devin Haney's lawyer, but let's just hope for Devin Haney's sake that he is not one of those or his lawyer is not one of those race fans. Because if he is, then Devin Haney, he might as well just hire Ryan Garcia's lawyer. Quite frankly, I think Devin Haney, he should hire my lawyer, Issa, the one that you guys see in my ads at the end of my videos. Because he knows what he's doing and most importantly, he is going to fight for you. With that being said, I'm going to wrap this video up. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. Let me tell you guys about Issa Israel Law Firm. It is a full service legal practice based in Denver, Colorado, an emerging hub for combat sports and high altitude training. If you're a fighter inside or outside of the ring and you need a law firm you can trust to fight for you, visit thefighterfirm.com or email help at iilawfirm.com. Legal representation is usually limited to plaintiffs and defendants in Colorado, but iFirm can help anyone in the world with trademarking their business name, logos, and U.S. immigration issues. This brother has been my attorney for a while and helped guide me through all kinds of business and civil issues, so make sure you guys go to thefighterfirm.com. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, the fever blisters, diabetic ulcers, this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Key Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation, and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to lodekey.com. Like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram.